Oh, holy shit. Um, well, as you all know, I'm Glenn Lentz again. I thought I'd do a commentary on the very first video game video I ever did. And that would be this one. Playing some Super Mario World. Game on with Austin and Glenn where we looked at Super Mario World for the Super NES. Oh, man. We were already so many games in my turn. Yeah. Oh, okay. This was a little bit after I moved into my place, so I didn't really have anything. Like, I I didn't have any good-looking drapes. I used, like, a really shitty-looking blanket to cover my window (laughs) up. Like, this this setting looks terrible, like my apartment. And when you watch video, like, video game videos where you're watching people play video games, I feel like your home should be another character in the video. Where if you're not looking at us, you should be looking at the things on our walls that kind of make you look back on your childhood and stuff, you know. The, the things that kind of reflect on who we are as, as gamers, too, like the, the guys you're watching. And where we are just looks like total shit, like... But there, there are a lot of things I need to explain about this video. Of course, I just told you it's my very first video game video. I knew I wanted to do a video game series. Because I I had just uh, discovered a lot of video gamers on YouTube that I really loved watching. Uh, James Rolfe, the angry, angry video game nerd. Pat, the NES punk I've watched since I lived in West Bend way back in uh, 2006, 2007. So around that time like period, I really system. wanted to start doing this. Didn't have any good equipment to do it with either. The audio sucks. The picture sucks because this is all around the time I was trying to get get a get a hold of the, my editing software that I had, my new editing program. My camera wasn't that great. I was trying to figure out the audio. I was trying to figure out everything. The only thing I had a good grasp on was my artwork, as you can see in the video. That looks polished. That looks all right. Everything else, total shit. But the thing I always prided myself on was being able to use total garbage to my advantage. I always had, you know, junky shit to work with, and that's, you know, I've always made something good with it. I've always made something good come of it, but... I like this video, and I don't like it at the same time, because it just looks terrible, like the quality of it. And I'm watching the 720p version of it, too, and it still looks like shit to me. But, um, I also did not have a DVD burner to record my game footage. Or uh, people nowadays have a PC hooked up to their video game consoles, and they're able to just uh, take the capture of the video game footage right to their hard drive. I don't have that. I still don't have that luxury. I use a DVD burner. And that works good enough for me. I can still use that. James Rolfe, if I'm not mistaken, uses that, too. So, um, this is still a good game. But... V- I was using VHS tapes to record my game footage, and it tells. I mean, it shows. The footage is grainy, there's like, you can see the fucking scan lines in it, it's wavy, it looks terrible. And not to mention, too, when you go into editing, whenever I edit game videos, you have to line up the game's audio with the audio in the video to make sure they match, to make sure what's happening in the video game matches up to what me and Austin are actually doing when we're playing, the button tapping, everything, the the reactions, all of its timing, and you want it to be believable and you want it to look good. And with VHS tapes, the timing changes so dramatically. Like... when I look back on it, a lot of the reason why it took me so long to do Game On with Austin and Glenn videos was because of the timing of the VHS tapes audio and trying to sync them together. It worked It worked terrible. And part of the reason, too, is because I wasn't using new tapes. I, there was this really shitty movie I didn't like, so I was taping over that. And when we do a new video, I would tape over our pre-existing game footage. Which makes it worse, it, you know, when you when you record on a v- VHS tape and then re-record over it, of course it's going to get worse and worse and worse. A lot like playing a tape constantly when you're a kid. You you were when we were kids anyway. We were playing tapes over and over and over again, like the movies we really loved. We wear out the tape, and that's something that I think that was going on with each Game On video. I I, I was filming Game On with Austin and Glenn videos on VHS tapes. 
up until I think uh, Power Rangers Part Two, where we played Super, uh, we played Mighty Morphin Power Rangers in the Super Nintendo. And that was on a VHS tape too. And it took me. No, the the Genesis one, Part Two is uh, uh, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers on the Sega Genesis, and that was on a VHS tape too. And it was. Just, it was a fucking nightmare trying to edit that shit because there's so much editing to try to try to make everything line up correctly the way it should be. And I, re- I remember editing this video too. Yet it was there was so much I didn't know about making these video game type videos, and I was it was this really was a prototype. We didn't have a theme song or nothing, so I used the Pac-Man video game intro on our you know the opening screen. Hit your, hit your forehead and die. Oh, awesome. Later on, I recorded our own theme song with with me playing guitar. Okay, we're gone. Oh, Yoshi and then, of course, that sounded like shit too because I don't have proper recording equipment. But whatever, and it served its purpose. Oh my god! Oh my! Oh! There were still funny moments in this video, though. You can't really deny that. Like I, there are parts in this video watching it where it's it's funny. Like. <laughs> Like right, like right here. Oh my god! <laughs> Even in later videos, there's so many times where I easily could have avoided death and fucked up anyway, just because I'm trying to talk on camera and I overlook something. And this is back at a time when I still wore my hat backwards too. So, uh. I'm sure if Austin's watching this right now. If you're watching this, Austin, you're probably just like, "Oh my god, my hair!" Because you know you keep your hair shaved nowadays and. Now you never wear your glasses either, so. <laughs> so you're probably like, even you know, even a couple of years ago, it's like, what did I look like back then? But I, I've done um, to date, I've done 82 Glenn plays videos. Uh, you know, game on with Austin and Glenn. I had to find time to get both of us together to do something, and we never planned out games that we were gonna do. It was always like a spontaneous thing. Like Austin came over to do this, we filmed it, and that was it. We didn't plan it. That's kind of what was fun about it—the spontaneity. The Power Rangers games too. We never planned it. He just came over, and we were, I was just like, "Hey, let's fucking film it." So that, that's how it ended up being. Really. Uh, with with Glenn plays Mondays, I plan the shit out on a time like a you know on a on a board pretty much. I plan out every game I'm gonna play. I play them all in one night, and then I get them all ready to go, and then I just release them each Monday. And it's I try to do it so it can free me up time to do other videos because I, I mentioned in the commentary on the the Killer Christmas special video that I still work at a factory, so that takes up most of my week. And I want to spend time with my son. I got other things I need to do too, important things like grocery shopping. You know, errands I got to run, or if some, my fucking car fails like it normally does, I need to take it in to get it fixed or whatever, just shit like that. So it's like these video game videos then become just a side thing. But there's something I want to keep doing every week. I want to keep my YouTube channel going by coming up with something each week. So Glenn Plays was easy enough. I got the hang of editing. Video game videos more efficiently. Where if, if if I could have Austin over more, then I could probably just say fuck Glenn plays after 100 episodes and have a partner. Because that's really what I wanted in the first place. Was just having a weekly video game series I could do with someone else. But I wanted it to be like a review, like a, like an informative review, not just us talking about shit. Um, yeah. I wanted us to do a little research on the game we were playing first. I try to do that with every game I do, just to give people younger, you know, younger people who come across my videos, if they're kind of curious about older game systems, about whatever game, I try to give them a little insight on what the game is, when it came out, what it's like, you know. And it, um, if it's a game me and Austin never played, I like getting our reactions, our first reactions on screen with the shit, you know. But if it's a game me and him played that we really love. Then of course our reactions are going to be you know the same, but it's we're always going to be sitting there talking about how awesome it is too. Uh, the, there's been a few times when me and Austin recorded something and I fucking had the video rolling. My you know my uh, 
you know, my mic, my, my mic's recording and everything. We start playing the fucking game. We get 15 minutes into it just to realize I forgot the fucking so press record on the DVD burner. And I, and that fucking just destroys it. Sometimes I can just save our reaction shots, but other times I can't. Like, we, I, I, I originally filmed a part two of Goat Simulator for Xbox 360, and that, that was a victim of that. Like, I forgot to press record on the DVD burner. And I really wanted to do this fucking video, too, because we were recording it at my grandma's house. And I mentioned in other Glenn Plays episodes, it's like, I I have, it's like I got my fucking game on at grandma's house. I've beat some really fucking hard games at grandma's house when I couldn't fucking do it at my own fucking house by myself. But it's like, when I'm at my grandma's house and my son's there playing and yelling and shit and, you know, getting into all this stuff and grandma's sitting there making me food, Austin's sitting there watching me, it's like, it's For some like, reason, I got my fucking game on at Grandma's house, and I beat some really fucking hard, hard games. You know, I I I got past quite a few levels on Silver Surfer. I, so oh, I beat. I recently cool. just beat Street Fighter 2010 at my Grandma's house. That was a huge fucking accomplishment for me. So, Super Seas, what I beat at my Grandma's house too. On three lives and a continue, so that was like a, a big thing. So it's like I'm beating all these fucking games at Grandma's house. I really wanted to film something at my Grandma's house. And I totally fucked it up by not hitting record on the DVD burner to record our game footage. Um, days Before Christmas, which is Glenn Plays episode 80. Yeah, that's another instance where I forgot to fucking hit the record button on the DVD burner. And I had such classic reaction shots from Austin because I played the game. I conquered Days Before Christmas about two or three times. He didn't play it at all. So some of his reactions to the stuff he was witnessing was priceless. It was great. You cannot get that over again. Sometimes you get stuff on film that you just cannot get again. And that was some of Austin's reactions to the game. And I fucked it up again because I didn't press the record button. But luckily, I was able to save those reaction shots and just use them elsewhere when we replayed the game. So, Yeah, so some of that Glenn plays might have been lying a little bit on some end. But kind of not. I mean, we still played through a lot of the game. You know, the first quarter of Days Before Christmas was, you know, a mix between actual reactions and when we had to play the game over again just to make up for lost time on the, the you know, not pressing record on the DVD burner. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know. I don't even remember why. We played this oh, game as a first video game yeah. video. And uh, Super Mario World is worth... It's worth making a good video on. And it was the first... It was my prototype video for a video game series. And I'm, surpri I'm very surprised Nintendo didn't flag this video for copyright stuff. Because I did uh, Glenn Play's Super Mario Brothers... Anything that involves, like, Before Halloween, it was a way stuff, way in the summer yeah. of 2016, and they they flagged that one right away for copyright stuff. I'm assuming it's just because Mario Maker was out and stuff, but it's like when you whenever you record something on digital signatures, this shit will almost always line up with itself. Like it got so much easier uh, recording these, recording and editing these game videos when I got all digital mediums to use. When I got a new laptop though from my son's mom. It's the laptop, uh, my camera doesn't have a microphone input on it, so I, I bought an additional shotgun mic, a boom mic, and, um, I have to record the audio separately. So the audio actually is getting recorded in my computer when we record a video, and the video is getting recorded on my camcorder. And then when I go into editing, I gotta line up the audio, you know, the audio with the video from my mic, and, uh, sync it together. Because the the audio on my camera just sucks. Like I, this this video, if you're listening to this, if you've ever watched this video, the audio really is terrible. That's the camera's microphone. It's internal microphone. It just sucks balls. And you can't do it. It's not as versatile as using a shotgun mic or a mic you can position in front of people. And once again, I'm telling you, I don't have a lot of money to buy new shit with. So you know anything good? I would like a Canon camera camcorder you know with a built-in mic but it's not gonna happen right now because i got a lot of student loans and other bills and shit to pay so 
I'm using what I got right now. Alright, slow down. Give a little when you go in the... What I was mentioning about the <laughs> laptop I got is when I went into editing a few times at this mic, the internal, the internal clock okay. of the computer has to match the internal clock of your digital camcorder. And if that doesn't, your audio is not going to match up. And that's the problem I ran into when I first got a microphone, like a shotgun mic, is the audio wasn't lining up. It kept straying away by like a millisecond, like a second, and then you know the audio wasn't matching our mouths. And that was a real piss off. So it's it, it's not that huge of a huge of a deal to fix when you do go into editing, but it's it's enough of a pain in the ass, you know. As if I would have just had a fucking camcorder with, you know, an output, you know, an external mic with a mic input on it. And that's something I would really like, but I don't have the extra, you know, five hundred dollars to get the camera I want. If I had it my way, I'd get a fucking three thousand dollar camera. And film videos with that. I would love that. Because there's some really good movie okay, cameras for about three really grand right that are just no, flawless no. cameras. Paul, and they're just amazing. Yeah, input mics and everything. Dead nuts. <laughs> oh, I almost forgot about the whole I dead nuts thing it. until I watched this again. I've never understood or heard people say it before. Dead nuts means it's good, like, like awesome. Right on. This was two years ago that I put this video up, and I'm still talking about it. Like, why the fuck does dead nuts mean a good thing? No one will ever know. Dead nuts sounds bad. You don't want dead nuts. Your testicles? If they're dead, that would suck. Well, unless he didn't want to have kids anymore, but, you know... Yeah, it's, this is the first time I've watched this video in probably like a year and a half, and I'm surprised it turned out as good as it did, but it still looks fucking terrible to me. Like, I'm so glad I got more efficient and better at making video game videos, because I love doing video game videos. I, if you've watched my YouTube channel, I do a number of different things. I like going to explore, exploring places. I want to I wanna do more uh, abandoned things. That's something I've really wanted to do because I've followed Adam the Woo on YouTube and he does all these abandoned places. Kill that guy when he just goes done. everywhere. He's got the money to go everywhere and explore places and show that oh, stuff to you. I want to do that. Oh. Not just video oh, games. I actually want to go place on places on foot because part of what I love doing is I actually going exploring out, exploring stuff, being outside. That's uh, I, During yeah. the summertime, that's my favorite thing to do. Yeah. Not just sit at home and play fucking video games all the time. Even though oh. video games are a big part of my life growing up. <laughs> There. Yeah, viewing this is this is oh, extremely rough around the edges. It's that's not, that's not money. this is almost like if a kindergartner made a fucking video game video <laughs> video. You know, like I, I tried taking cues when necessary from other YouTubers, but I think I've gotten a lot better at it after making you know like eighty that's some game videos. And I'm not gonna stop at any point either. I'm. I'm always going to have a video game video every week, every Monday. Even though I've, after the, I have been thinking about taking a break lately from it just to get caught up on a lot of the important things like getting my house under order and stuff and uh, doing more stuff with my son where it doesn't involve a camera because that's important too. I don't always want I don't always want to have the camera rolling. I want to have some time just to ourselves, you know. And I'm not like I'm not like big enough in my area. Where yeah, people are like yeah, asking yeah. for my fucking autograph or yeah. anything like that, you know. I've had a few no, people around Hartford notice me yeah, yeah, yeah. and recognize me based on a few things, like, "Oh, you're the guy that's always filming," or, you know, "You're the guy that has that flaming, you know, white station that. wagon and stuff around the area," or "I saw you on the internet," or "I saw it's your art," and it's become more there, common, but not common enough to where it's like overwhelming or. You know, superstardom or anything like that. It's maybe you know, maybe a couple people a month, if that. He's kicking a castle that's in the background, and that's that's being a little bit modest. I had like three or four people in one month spot me out and say, "Oh, you know, I saw you do this or this." You know, I like having fans. I think that's cool. But 
But anyway, this was my commentary on Super Mario World Game On with Austin and Glenn. Thanks for watching. Uh, you like what you see, you want to see more, just click that subscribe button on my YouTube channel and get Glennified. Thanks for watching, everyone.